Good day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Friday sort of afternoon, evening here in Australia and unfortunately the market has come down so a big 5.5% so it keeps going down and this is where it hurts. I did say I was suspecting that it might go down to 1.75, maybe even down to 1.345 trillion dollars. So if you watched my video yesterday you'll know what I'm talking about. But look, there's no guarantees it will. This may be the bottom, and that'll be great. If this is the bottom and it rocks up from here, then, you know, awesome and congratulations for everyone. Just, you know, keep in mind that it might not be. Now, again, I have to start off most videos by letting you know I'm never offering you financial advice. I'm definitely not a financial advisor. I'm just going to give you my opinion of what I see happening in the market and what I think might happen. And remember, that's all it is, is what I think might happen. I am no clairvoyant. I don't actually... 100% know what is going to happen in the market. Nobody does. All we're doing is everybody, all the YouTubers, TikTokers, and you know, Twitter people on Twitter, you name it, they're all just guessing. Now, there's some you know, kind of theory behind it. It's not just picking random numbers out of the sky, although some people are probably doing that. You know, it's using TA and things like that, and you know, your experience in the market or some of those people's experience in the market. So just try to keep that in mind that if I ever, ever give price predictions, and I don't do them too often, but if I do, it's a guess. It's definitely, you know, you shouldn't be trying to bank on it or anything like that. All right, so let's have a look. Bitcoin dominance sitting around 38%, moving up ever so slightly. Not much, just under 39%. Not a lot of volume, so this is what's pretty scary. Bitcoin price just holding above sort of $41,000, $40,000 at the moment. And gas prices quite low. Again, people panicking and sort of getting out. All right, top 100. Has anything done well in the last 24 hours? Probably the stable coins. All right, there you go. Adam had a small pump, but again, you're seeing these pumps. A lot of this is... You know, you just got to be careful. It's a pump today, but it's going to go down by even more tomorrow. So, yeah, buyer sort of beware is what I would say. So, Adam, nice little pump there, but, you know, what's it going to look like in the next sort of 48 hours? You know, I'm going to go out on a limb and say maybe a little bit lower than what it is right now, but maybe not. We'll have to wait and see. All right, considering the market's down 5.5%, what about losses though? This is probably going to be the more telling story. As we can see, there's hardly any sort of gainers there. So the losses is where we're really going to see it and sort of feel it, obviously. Spell token, 14%. Cello, 12%. Aave, 11%. Back down to that kind of $200 range. I will be looking to buy more Aave if it gets down to $180, $169 thereabouts. Now again, as I've said in the last few videos, if you've been watching, I'm not going crazy. I'm not throwing the kitchen sink at anything at any price. I'll just buy a little bit. That's all I will do. Whether I'll be have enough to buy one whole Aave or just a little bit of Aave or something like that, but that is a price that I'm looking for. Kind of that 100, I think it's about 184, $169 level. I think that's not a bad buy there. But again, that's not to say it can't go lower, particularly if we are in a bear market. All right, R weaves down, Solana, 136. My average buy-in was 170, so I'm way down uh, on Solana. But again, that's something that I'm going to look to buy a little bit more of. Unless it turns around tomorrow and rockets up, then too bad, so sad. What can you do? But $136, I'll have to go check out the charts and see whether I think it might fall a little bit more or if that's a good price. But Solana uh, on the cheap or cheaper than what I originally bought it for sounds good to me. All right, but look, lots of you know, pretty reasonable size losses. And the, the thing is, there's no kind of real crazy ones, but they back it up every couple of days. And that's where it's really starting to kind of hurt. So let's go have a look at the Bitcoin chart and this shows it all. As I said, you know, these are the levels that I'm looking for. Now we already made it down into here. We're into the 40 to $42,000 range. I had my buy order for Bitcoin sort of just up around about there. It got filled. Now I've got another buy level for Bitcoin at around kind of, I think it's $36,500, thereabouts, I've got another buy order. Now again, I'm not throwing the kitchen sink, and I'm not saying Bitcoin's going to get down there. But if it does, then I'm buying some. And I definitely have a buy order in for $34,500, $33,500, $32,500. Now again, not the kitchen sink, because if we're in a bear market, 
there is another CME gap. You can't see it on here. This isn't the CME chart. Down at like 22,000. And some people have shown some charts where they think Bitcoin could be heading back down to 10,000. I don't know what price it's going to. I think this will probably be the bottom and will spring from here. But I'm not going to put all my money into it just in case I'm wrong. I will just keep chipping away at it on the way down. And again, as I said before, my altcoins that I really like, if they get down to certain prices, I'll put a few dollars into them. But I'm not going crazy on any altcoins at the moment. Because if we are truly in a bear market and 60 sort of 5 was the top, then I would say I wouldn't be surprised to see Bitcoin down at sort of 10000 maybe $12,000 in a few months to a sort of year's time. And look, maybe even lower. Maybe it's going back down to sort of 8000 5000 We'll just have to wait and see. You know, that's why I realign my portfolio. Like I said, I put 10% into cash, uh, and that 10% is basically just, you know, kind of earning, you know, yield uh, at the moment, and I'm not going to do too much with it until I get a better indication. Like if we drop below 32.5000 dollars, then I think it's safe to say that we probably are in a bear market. It's not to say we can't come down here and bounce from here but really considering that's where that CME gap is if we went much lower I'd be automatically thinking right now we're probably going down to 22,000 where the next CME gap is and that's where I think it's probably likely if we're in a bear market that it should bounce because we've never had Bitcoin go lower than an old previous high and the last previous high was 20 ish well 19 and a half thousand so that CME gap at sort of $22,000 I think or 24,000 somewhere about there, that really should be the bottom if we're in a bear market. But what we already know is the markets have changed. So maybe we can go lower and that is the kind of scary part. We don't know how much lower it's going, but I still believe in Bitcoin. I still believe in crypto. I haven't given up. I'm not throwing in the towel. Uh, there really is no price other than, you know, if Bitcoin somehow ends up at $300, then don't get me wrong, I'll be really worried. If Bitcoin goes under $10,000, I'll be extremely worried. But, you know, that's investing. That could happen to Tesla. It could happen to Google. It's less likely to happen to them, but it could happen. There's no such thing as a, you know, kind of safe bet because that's really what it is. You're taking, I don't like to think of it like betting, but that's what it is. You're betting on a stock or on a company or in this case on, on a technology that it's going to do well over the long term. In the short term, I mean, look, what was it? Oil went to minus $40. Who thought that could have ever happened? And yet oil has bounced back fairly well. It's doing quite fine now. Imagine you bought oil at, you know, minus $40 or took a long on oil at minus $40. You would be laughing right now. All right, but anyway, what I want you to keep in mind is, you know, there's going to be people out there say, you know, going, see, I told you crypto, it's this and it's that and it's crap and it's rah. Yeah, it, it is more extreme in both, <coughs> excuse me, the upsides are way more extreme and so are the downsides. But let's see, are traditional stocks and things doing better? All right, S&P 500, Ugh, that is not looking good. So for all those people out there, they're gonna probably hammer about crypto and this and that, and you know, you should have your money in stocks. Yeah, the loss was less, but it was still pretty significant. That's the difference between crypto. And once people work that out, and understand that the upside is so much more you just have to be able to deal with the downside people will become more accustomed to it and again there's more millennials becoming millionaires through crypto than in the stock market the stock market is a slowly but surely dissolving kind of market it's not going to go away but it is going to have to change it is going to have to go to the blockchain and it's going to have to get really smart if it wants to try and compete with crypto because at the moment it just can't Again, it's just people getting used to the volatility, understanding that volatility is your friend. You just got to hold the downs and then ride the highs because the highs are absolutely fantastic compared to this. But in saying that, you know, crypto over time, 10, 20 years, will become a lot more stable like this, uh, you know, like the traditional market. So keep that in mind. But look, S&P 500, not doing so well. What about the Dow Jones? Nah, that's also pulling back as well. But what about gold then? You know, the oldest kind of hedge we've had in the world. Uh, no, nah, it's not doing too well. And it hasn't been doing well since 
May. It's been on its way down. Now, it has been going up since that big crash, 2020, the crash of everything, but now it's starting to come back down. And Peter Schiff will come out there and tell you it's the greatest thing ever. All right. Since 2010, basically 2011, it hasn't been doing so well. Now, it has had a bit of a bounce, and I'm not saying it can't, you know, recover and go back up from here. And this is the gold and silver sector, so we need to keep that in mind. But it ain't looking so good. So it really doesn't matter where your money is at the moment, other than I would say property. Property is probably still doing pretty well around the world, but that won't last forever once they start to raise interest rates and things like that. So, you know, where do you put your money? Again, unless you're in property, I don't know where you can have your money that's really safe at the moment because we all know what's happening to cash. It may, the tapering may happen and cash may become more valuable for a period of time, but it simply won't last forever because they have to keep printing money. That is how the traditional system works. That ain't ever going to stop, ladies and gentlemen. So keep that in mind. But also, look, a little bit of positive. The third largest Bitcoin whale swallows up another $24 million worth of BTC during the dip. Now, what you need to remember is $24 million worth of BTC is not a lot. So even the third largest whale out there is not, well, I mean, we don't know how much cash they have, but I'm going to say they probably got a fair bit of cash. And I don't know if $24 million worth of cash is that much. I would say they've got more in case it goes lower because even the third largest whale out there doesn't know just how low it can go and they are probably always going to keep uh, again a percentage of their money in cash so they can buy the dip and that's what you need to remember now it's not financial advice that's not me telling you what you have to do that's just me letting you know what a lot of the smart investors do which is exactly what I told you I had to do only December 14th so sort of three weeks ago really thereabouts I had to rebalance my portfolio I was just cash poor and too heavy on crypto and it turns out that it's worked out all right but we'll just have to wait and see exactly how low it goes and you know I could have taken a lot more cash out but you know you just it's too hard to know and I don't want to have too much in cash at any one time all right that's it from me I'm not going to take up too much more of your time again we're really just waiting on you know all of the markets remembering that Bitcoin is really going to react to how the S&P 500 does and the Dow Jones and gold and all of that they all they are correlated Bitcoin is more correlated to the S&P 500 and particularly tech stocks than anything but at the moment you know we're on shaky ground if bitcoin loses that kind of forty thousand, and again not just some kind of crazy wick we can have a crazy wick come down so we might have a crazy wick that kind of comes down into a thirty six thousand, then we pop back up to 40 who knows but i would have buy orders set in if you want to be buying at a discount that's me that's not financial advice you've got to do you but again for me i reckon a buy order around kind of thirty seven thousand, or sorry 30 what was it 30 yeah, thirty-seven thousand, dollars thereabouts would uh, have a buy order. And then I'm starting to look at this CME gap down here. Like I said, I'm going to have one just above $34,500. I'm going to have one at $33,500. I'm going to have one just above $32,500. But again, I won't be going too crazy just in case we really are headed back down to ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000. I want to make sure I have cash uh, to buy that. Now, my personal opinion is I don't see that happening. But ladies and gentlemen, I've been wrong before. I'll be wrong again. I don't know everything. This is just a guy who's been in the space for a while giving you an opinion. And an opinion is all it is. I like to think a somewhat educated one, but nonetheless, just an opinion. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that cane train at the moment. If you were short in the market, then you are doing extremely well and congratulations to you. I don't recommend shorting or longing anything. I'd rather just invest, but that's me. You do you, and I'll see you next time.